Hey guys, so today we're going to make a Strata Citra IPA with uh, some Viking Extra Pale Turo. Uh, so it's supposed to be a super light colored uh, pale malt, um, but still kind of made the same way that Turo's made. So we're gonna test it out. I just got some, just heard about it, and uh, I've never used Strata hops either. So I hope that the combination of the Strata and the Citra will be kind of citrusy, fruity, um, with like undertones of dankness. Like one of the uh, descriptors is cannabis on it. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, so yeah, we are gonna get to it. I'm making five gallons today. Brew in a bag, same as always, but we have a mill here now, so we're gonna do that whole rigmarole as well. All right, water. So today, actually, um, I'm at my neighbor's house again, and they have a hot water heater for their hose. It just kind of goes off their hot water. So uh, we're gonna fill this with pre-warmed water, hopefully getting to our strike temperature, which is gonna be around 154 is going to take almost no time. This should hopefully fill at around 120 degrees. Just gonna bleed the hose a bit and let it get warm. So I'm gonna light this and while we're waiting for it, we're going to measure out all our grain and mill it. Um, yeah, and test out this new mill. This is a evil twin mill. Uh, it was the one they had at uh, Olympic Brewing Supply uh, up here in Bremerton, so I bought it. Okay, so first we're going to adjust the... Sean, I'm going to show you how to do this for when I'm gone. Uh, <laughs> for when I have to go back to California. Um, so we're going to adjust the mill using the old credit card method. Um, so basically... So for brewing a bag, I like to do like a really tight on the credit card. So this is really loose. Okay. Um, so how you adjust it is there's little wing nuts here and then you just turn the roller in and you can get it like real close. Is it, there's another one on the other side? There's two, yeah. Oh, and it actually, this one has um, markings? like markings for your spacing. Wow. So this one actually is kind of nicer than mine. But you can also just kind of stick a credit card in there and it'll kind of adjust. Looks like it's in thousands or something. Uh, it might be in millimeters. Um, so this is still a little high for what I want. So I would go for like 0 0.04, I think. Yeah. Nice. 0 0.04 is, I don't know how many credit cards I've ruined. I usually use my Metro card. Um, yeah, and then tighten the wing nuts and it should be good. Um, and then I usually try to like, toss in a little bit of grain just to uh, make sure that, yeah. So I'm gonna, this bowl's too heavy for my scale. It's over 10 pounds? <laughs> yeah, I might need a... Uh... Oh wait, scale? no it's not. Ooh, or a bigger scale, Sarah. I mean, I don't know. This one, it's working now. I don't know why it did that. Okay, so I'm gonna measure out we need nine pounds of two row. So I'm gonna do five and then four. Okay. And we can just put it in as we go. I'm just gonna test it right now. Working great. Okay. Um. So that's our nine pound of two row. And I'm also gonna do four ounces of caramel 10 and four ounces of honey, and then one pound of white wheat. That's caramel 10. It's already milled because I did it at home. And this is honey. We don't need to mill this. 
And this is the one ounce or one pound of white wheat. Okay, and then we're just going to um, throw this white wheat in there and check this temperature. Um, okay, so our temperature is already at 140. So we're just gonna get it up to 154 and then mash in. Shout out to Makita, making a battery powered drill that can run a mill. This mill is so much lighter than my other one. Okay, so we're making a juicy IPA, so we're gonna add some calcium chloride. I'm just adding two grams. It'll kind of sweeten it up a bit. I'm just doing it in this thing. So I'm putting that right into my mash water. And we are at our strike temp, so I'm gonna pull this. So we're around 154. Drape in my brew in a bag bag. Okay, so I'm gonna just mash in real quick. So this mash is only gonna be for 45 minutes. Um, we've been overreaching our targets lately. Uh, somehow my brew house efficiency has gone up to like 90%, but I still like can't believe that it's gonna happen every time. So I'm setting my brew father brew house efficiency around uh, 85%. Um, I have no idea what's going on other than maybe the water out here is just amazing and Using the brew in a bag system, you can kind of really extract everything even without sparging. So when I'm like squishing all the liquid out of this bag, it really increases your yield. And you know, it like some people I think think that you might get a, some astringency because of it or because of how fine we mill it. Um, we're milling at about point, what was it, point oh four setting on that evil twin thing, which we're gonna figure out what measurement that actually is measuring. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, you can get so much more out of this without really any consequences, it seems like. I brewed one of like my favorite beers that I've ever made when we first got up here, and it was like 2% points higher than what it was supposed to be, and who knows? There can be a lot of factors. We're also in a different area, different water, different climate. Um, but yeah, it's kind of nice. So we, um, I'm slowly decreasing the amount of malt I'm using for, from what I'm used to. Uh, so this is a, a total of 10 pounds, eight ounces. Uh, our last brew turned out to be a 10.5er and we used around 12 pounds of malt so I'm hoping that this one's not that crazy so our mash temp is right around 150 which I like that'll give us a pretty dry beer um, it'll be nice all right so I'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes and go transfer the beer that we currently have in the fermenter and Make some room. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes. Um, I'm just gonna throw this in, see how much temperature we lost. So it dropped down to around 144, which is fine. Got a better stick today. It's a new stick every time. Yeah, it'll, um, It'll like pour out if you go too fast or if it's too far. Just under six gallons in here still. We started out with six and a half of water and I'm going to take a reading I'm going to leave this open it's warm today so it doesn't really need the cover to boil uh, 
Okay. Our original gravity, we got 10, which seems very low. <laughs> First time. I'm gonna remeasure it. Damn. What is happening? Still low? Yeah, it's 10. So our pre-boil gravity should have been 1.06. It's probably gonna be 1.05. I don't know, we might just end up with a lighter beer. We can mix this with the triple. So, ugh, our pre-boil gravity is 1.041, which is not ideal. We can also boil it off further. So if we boil it to like four and a half gallons, it'll be higher ABV. I mean, this lines up better with like what I typically get at home. So I don't know. I don't know what was going on with those other batches. Maybe there was a lot more grain, wasn't there? I mean, the, the Belgian, not, there was, no, there wasn't. Cause huh. it was only 10 and eight ounces. So we did a four gallon brew on that. Maybe the shit, that's what it was. Okay. So we can do like a four gallon on this one too. Or four and a half. Four and a half is probably better. There's a boil off and dilution calculator on Brewer's Friend that's actually perfect for this. So I'm gonna try to use it. So we're boiling now, um, but our first top addition isn't until the 30 minute mark, which is one ounce of strata. And so we're just gonna let it go and hopefully get our gravity a little bit up. We're probably gonna boil this down to around four and three quarters gallon, um, just because our mash efficiency was lower than anticipated. Um, don't really know why we did just calibrate our thermometer though, and it was a couple degrees high, so we may have had more unfermentable sugars in it than fermentable sugars. Um, even though uh, the mash temp was around 150-ish. Um, we'll just boil it off until we get the gravity we want, which is about 1.066. It's been 30 minutes. Um, and basically what I'm gonna do is do our first hop addition at 30 minutes, our one ounce of strata. Uh, and I'm just gonna throw it in in the hot bag. Ooh, this smells good. Oh, right? <laughs> it smells like grapefruit weed. <laughs> Can't hurt them, right? I mean, we can do two ounces if you want, but it's gonna be a hot bomb, especially with a little, the less uh, uh, amount of. Um, Alcohol, essentially. Okay, so we're just gonna put this in. Oh shit, I broke that. Drop that in, tie it off, and set a timer for uh, 25 minutes. So this was a 30 minute addition. It's gonna make it break again. Look at how much that's foaming. Technically hops are supposed to prevent a hot break that's like foams over because they have oil in them. So like, you know how you can like in pasta water, you can put in olive oil to like prevent your pasta from like boiling over. So it breaks the uh, retention of bubble. Supposedly hops do the same thing to beer, but I guess not. Well, we should get some great utilization at the very least. That smells awesome. All right, so I'm gonna set a timer for 25 minutes. We are losing volume pretty rapidly, which is good. I'm surprised we haven't kicked that Belgian yet. It can continue to fix itself, right? Yeah. So as we're going down. Yeah, as it boils, just it'll because we've decrease. Added the hops, it doesn't really matter, right? No. I mean, you, you can see the steam. 4.11 believe to go. Well, we were at 11 bricks, and we need to get up to 15 bricks. Oh, yeah, that's what you're saying. But so, so we're still going to be boiling off here. Yeah. It for another half hour and then that's what you were thinking about, also right? yeah and then also when when we uh chill it we'll lose more volume so okay. it'll be fine we'll get a we'll get a decent beer out of it i'm sure i'm sure 
Okay, so it's been 25 minutes, so I'm just gonna quickly measure out one ounce of Strata, and I've got my two ounces of Citra right there. This is not over. So somehow I'm gonna try to get this into my hot bag. Okay, so that's our strata, and then we need to open this two ounces of citra. All right, so just pour those guys in. Thankfully, Olympic Brewing is still open for curbside pickup, or I would not have any citra. Um, so I'm just going to tie this off, set a timer for five minutes, and I'm going to toss in my Werflock tablet, my yeast nutrient, and my chiller. So one Werflock tablet, uh, just a little capful of yeast nutrient, and the chiller. So just going to sprinkle in some yeast nutrient. This thing's really going. So it's carrageenan. It's clarified or purified carrageenan, which is seaweed. Ah, of course we need some seaweed in the room. It um, basically precipitates the haze, so it'll give you a clearer beer in the end. And it makes all the protein fall to the bottom. So I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes and connect the hose. Okay, so for our dry hop, we're doing one ounce of citra and one ounce of strata, just like our five minute edition was. And we're just gonna throw it in as soon as it's chilled, so I'm gonna weigh it out now. You can tell those are fresh, look how green they are. I know, that's why I was kinda like, where do you get those things? Those look a lot fresher than So these are from More Beer. Um, the artisan brand hops are the ones that they sell, but um, I also get a lot of my hops from Yakima Valley Hops. Okay, so we're done. I'm cutting this heat, and we just need to turn on the chiller. Time to cool? Yep. So we've already gotten it down to about four um, gallons. I think the reason that we've been getting higher than uh, usual original gravities is that we are using a smaller brew pot and we're using a pretty powerful burner. So I think our boil off is more than I'm anticipating. And I don't really pay attention. Like once it goes in the fermenter, I just take the original gravity. And if it's close, I'm happy. If it's not, I'm like, what's going on now? So I think that's probably why our original gravity was lower on this one. But I actually think we might be pretty close to what we want right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take a final gravity reading. Okay, so it's looking like our final gravity is 14 bricks, which is, it's a little bit less than we were expecting, I think, but, you know, with how much we've been fighting it, I'm pretty happy about it. So our gravity ended up being 1.059, and I'm gonna pitch some Nottingham yeast, which should get us down pretty far. So I think it's still going to be above a six percenter, which is what we were aiming for. We don't like session IPAs in this uh, quarantine family. <laughs> so we're going to get this all down and we'll transfer and we've got a weird vessel to transfer into, so stick around. Okay, so we are at around 70 degrees right now. I'm just going to feed this hose on so we can start transferring. Um, we have one of these wall hanging uh, fermenters that I've actually just got to get the sanitizer out of real quick. So we're going to transfer it right into here. And then this hangs on the wall. Um, it's a pretty cool design. So just gonna go for it like that. Um, it's gonna make some aeration happen. Uh, Maja really wants some beer, apparently. So while we're doing this, I'm gonna feed in this dry hop bag. I'm actually just gonna give it a quick mist. 
just to kill anything that might be on the outside of the bag. Um, um, what's going to be difficult is actually getting this in here and then getting it out. Um, but I want a juicy IPA, so I'm hoping that we have some hop biotransformation happening with this. I'm going to just try to cover all of the hops. You know, I'm trying to minimize the amount of oxygen we have as much as possible because we don't really have a way to separate out our CO2 system from the keyser that we're using. So, so this is one way we're attempting to minimize the amount of oxygen because like right now it's okay to get oxygen in it, but in a couple days we're going to have really active yeast and you don't want to introduce any oxygen really. So it's like, what's the point in really waiting a day to add the hops when we could just do it now while it's open? And so here is my pack of hops. It's just a Nottingham yeast. I'm sanitizing that and the scissors I'm using. I'm just gonna throw it in right now because we've already taken our breeding and it's all good. I really never rehydrate my yeast. It, I've been doing it this way for a long time and never really noticed a difference. Um, so I just toss it right in. So we're getting to the bottom of this right now. So we definitely like don't need the blow off tube. We should just throw an airlock on it. Okay. So we're getting about four gallons out of this. Um, which is fine. Uh, so this is actually all my neighbor's equipment and I have told him that the first thing that he needs to buy is a 10 gallon pot because so we're working on a around 8 gallon and it's a little dicey to mash in on this thing. Um, so we're just going to throw... We were thinking a blow-off tube at first, but with the decreased capacity, um, we're just gonna throw an airlock on this thing. And then I'll show you guys the stand that it actually fits on. Okay, so we're filling this guy. On my shoe, apparently. Okay, so we're gonna move this over to the garage where we have the bracket set up for it and I'll show you guys all that. Okay, so let's lift it up. Hopefully it stays under 70 degrees in here. We will oh, oh wow. shit! Oh, it'll work. It'll... Okay, oh. alright, it'll work. Oh. Are you on your... Yep. Are you on your post? Yep. Yeah. It works. It works. So I'm just gonna sanitize this connection um, because this is where all the yeast is gonna fall. So, all right, so now's the true test. We're gonna release this valve and let the yeast, or like the beer fall in there. Alright, so basically all the yeast in the troop is going to end up in here, and then all the beer is going to end up here. We can release this once it's done, and then transfer clean beer out. And that's it! Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe! So a quick update on that fermenter. Um, yeah, it did not work out great. Um, the hole where the yeast is supposed to fall is a very, very tiny. So we had a lot of hop matter in it because we dry hopped, obviously. So even though it was in a bag, it clogged that hole really, really, really bad. Like we even tried to blow CO2 up through it and it didn't dislodge anything. So we ended up having to siphon that beer. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't recommend those fermenters at all, but if you have one, I strongly suggest not using it for a really hoppy IPA. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it, bye. <laughs> hey guys, to so- I love how you always have to start over. <laughs> always. Takes a couple, couple tries. All right, let's do it for real this time.
Okay, so I had this idea the other day. You guys have a kiddie pool and you have hot water coming out of your faucet. That's all I'm saying. That's a built-in jacuzzi. It is, it works. <laughs> Don't take your hand off that drill. Put that thing back where it came from. We need to, uh... It probably is. Don't put hops next to a burner. Or yeast. Fine. No, it's not. No more pizza before brewing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and I've got my two ounces of Cascade. Or not Cascade. Ah! No one has a knife. Ah! Do you ever have anybody complain? Um, I had a neighbor who didn't like the smell of it, uh, but I always brewed inside my apartment until recently. So, not really. Oh shit, shit, shit. Can we cut it? Yep. I had too much beer already. <laughs> All right.